Continuing to keep you updated on the Micah Francis and John Paul Miller case. Well, just when you think it's over, it's not. I talked about the global settlement that was reached between both parties. That being John Paul Miller and Solid Rock along with the Francis family. Of course, again, that was on July 29th. And a lot of people were upset by that news you know, they accused the Francis family of selling out for money, which is crazy to me because, you know, the number that was passed around as far as what they allegedly received in the settlement really wasn't that much anyway. And all those people that were rooting for them and praying for them just that quickly turned their backs on them. And that's that's how fickle people can be. You know, they make it more about themselves than they do the actual family. And look, there's so much, too, that we probably don't know and won't know. As far as what's being discussed between the Francis family and their attorney, Regina Ward. So, you know, we were led to believe that this would, you know, basically settle everything, right? The global settlement. Maybe JP would finally be forced to stay quiet in light of the settlement, right? The videos from him kind of stopped and everything. And we thought that maybe, okay, the Francis family is going to let the FBI do their thing. Right, and, and, and everything that they're doing and investigating, they'll bring him down. And that still may happen. But in the meantime, a piece of news came out earlier in the week. JP filing a shocking new affidavit. Against who? Well, the Francis family, of course. And things that were said in this affidavit were very interesting. Of course, we are going to discuss it in just a second, but before we do... I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And also, if you really enjoy and appreciate what I do, and you are able to contribute with a donation to help me out, you can really use it right now. As I've told you guys in past videos, my wife recently suffered a stroke, spent about a week in the hospital, and there is going to be quite a bit of recovery ahead of us. She is out of her job right now for at least a minimum of six weeks, but does not have any sort of a short-term disability or leave of absence. Basically, she's not getting paid for six weeks. That, compiled with the medical bills that we have in light of her hospital stay, uh, we could really use your help at this time. So if you're able to contribute with the, with the donation to help out this ministry and just help us out in general, there's a couple different ways you could do that. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video, or you can become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash news. That link is in the description and I will say big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so thank you as well your generosity is greatly appreciated so let's get into it John Paul filing in probate court earlier in the week a brand new affidavit saying all kinds of stuff about the Francis family yeah I mean I kind of thought that maybe he wouldn't be talking as well now it could be that per terms of the agreement, and again, we don't know all of what was in this global settlement as far as if JP can, you know, can go out talk and do media and all that. Now, to my knowledge, he hasn't done any any videos or given any, you know, any interviews with any podcast or anything like that since the settlement was reached. And a lot of us, again, we thought that that may be the case. But he did file this new affidavit. So he may have been able to kind of you know, use a little bit of a loophole there to spew out some more stuff about the Francis family. And that's exactly what he did. So he files this affidavit in probate court, wanting to, you know, again, try and set the record straight, try and restore his image, whatever you want to say. And like we have seen since the very beginning, the finger was pointed directly at the Francis family. 
By the way, if you guys want to check out the full affidavit, you can go ahead and go over to Fitz News. That's where you can find uh, the whole thing there. You can read it, you know, in in depth there. So one thing that I found interesting is that JP was trying to shine a light on how the marriage between him and Micah had changed for the better. Now, this is very interesting to me because we knew that this marriage has been on the rocks for really, you know, years. And JP paints himself again as the perfect husband all throughout this affidavit. A lot of it was stuff we've already heard before. That's why I'm saying if you want to go read it in its entirety, you can go over to Fitz News and do that. But I just wanted to point out a couple of things from it that had not been previously said or heard before because i think it's honestly hysterical now before i get into that i want to remind everybody of something that even jp himself said at one point and it immediately took me back to that moment where he you know was was confronted and said you know the family's been filing affidavits against you remember they did it right after micah passed away you had sarah francis along with her brother nathaniel but jp even said you know and I believe this was that, that little impromptu interview that he did with Justin on TikTok where he said this, that, you know, anybody can just file an affidavit and just make up whatever sort of nonsense they wanted. They can lie. They can, you know, put whatever they want in there. And then it's just, it, it's out there. So that immediately took me back to that when I saw that JP himself filed this affidavit in, in, in probate court. So you have to, you know, look at that and realize that, look, the guy is telling you. Anybody can just file an affidavit, say whatever they wanted. That makes a lot of sense to me, especially when I went through the affidavit and saw everything that JP had to say. And again, a lot of it finger pointing at Micah's family. JP was the only one who tried to keep Micah alive, that wanted to help her, gave her her medicine, right? Tried to, you know, get her to you know, get her to the doctor, get her checked in all these places, right? The family, he said, I would try to reach out to them, communicate to them what was going on, and, and they would just go against me. They didn't believe me. And then I saw this interesting piece of information that JP had claimed that in January of 2024, now you got to remember, this is like a month before Micah was, you know, put into the hospital against her will, said the marriage was going really well. In fact, even a text message he says that Micah sent to her family back on December 19th, 2023, that Things with JP were going well, that he was being very supportive of her. In fact, this made me laugh. She had even asked JP to be her life coach <laughs> going forward in her recovery. Th think about that for a second. JP, a life coach. And remember again, JP said anybody can make up stuff in an affidavit, say whatever they want, and just put it out there. How many of you watching this right now would want JP as your life coach? In any way at all, okay? But this is what he's claiming in his affidavit, that Micah said this to her family, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, the marriage got better in January of 2024. Everything was, everything was going great, right? But then... JP had sent a text to Micah's brother, Nathaniel, and said that, look, we really need Micah to take her medicine. Uh, and, and, you know, she says that if her, her father gets involved, that, that'll, that'll help her, Michael Francis. That'll help her to take her medicine. But JP said that, Nathaniel, instead of saying that to Micah, said that, look, JP's trying to come after you, whatever, and, and, this encouraged her father, Michael Francis, to tell her to leave the county. Flee, leave the county, get away, so they can't come after you. Of course, we know that eventually Micah was hospitalized against her will on February 6th, around February 6th, 7th. But that a text was even sent out on February 5th, still claiming that everything was just perfectly fine between these two. And that, again, if the family just listened to JP, none of this would have ever happened in the first place. The whole affidavit was just a, a glowing, you know, really JP just putting himself up on a pedestal, you know, perfect husband, perfect this and that. He also uh, talked about the, the misinformation that was 
put out there by both Sierra Francis and her brother Nathaniel in their affidavits after Micah had passed away. JP had pushed back on their claims that he had mistreated Micah in any way whatsoever. And these were just lies that were designated by her family to make him look bad, to make his church look bad, to take members away from them, all of it. And look, you have to understand that he's doing everything in his power to restore his image. The church is hurting. They've lost members, right? People are leaving left and right. I don't even know, to be honest with you, if there's actually any preaching going on inside that church. And who's even doing it? Is it even JP? Is it someone else? What's going on? The protests have not stopped. Those have continued. Remember, there was this effort between, you know, both attorneys, Regina Ward and, and, and John Paul's attorney, Russell B. Long, to encourage protesters to move on and say that this is justice for Micah, except it really wasn't. And they have continued to be out there. And I think that's a good thing because they know this is not over. We have heard talks that there are lawsuits coming soon against JP for inappropriate behavior, whether they involve members from the church or outside the church, that we don't know. But we've been told that those are coming. We've not yet seen them. Doesn't mean that they're not going to surface at some point. But it is definitely something to keep an eye on. And again, if the global sediment was reached, why did JP come out with this affidavit? Again, going after Micah's family. What we saw him do in those TikTok videos a couple of months ago where he was putting them out almost every night. The story is definitely not over here. There is going to be more that comes of it. Whether or not it lands in any arrests or not remains to be seen. I don't, I can't give you that answer. Here's what I can tell you. And I always say this. With any, it doesn't even, whether it's a pastor, whether, whoever it is, in a position of authority, if they escape earthly justice, and many do, they will not escape eternal justice because eternal justice is you and the Lord, one-on-one, -on -one, giving an account of what you've done. You're either going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, or you're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. Now, JP would have you believe that he can't wait for the day that he is reunited with Micah in heaven again. And I am reminded of the scripture that talks about not everybody, not everybody is going to enter heaven when they, you know, again, they go before the Lord, they go, Lord, but Lord, I, 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 I did this for you and I cast out demons in your name and I did this and I did that. And then they hear, depart from me, I never knew you. JP seems pretty sure of himself that one day he'll be standing before the presence of the Lord. And look, I hope that that happens for him. In fact, the Bible even says that God's will is that none should perish. None should perish. See, what that means is even the most wicked. That's sometimes it's hard for us to grasp. But that all would come to repentance. The problem with that is that not all will come to repentance. In fact, it looks to me like JP is doubling down on everything that he has said from the very beginning doesn't look to me like a genuine heart change there at all. But he would have you believe that, again, he's a perfect husband. He did everything for his wife. And it was her family that were the ones that are responsible for her no longer being here today. I'll leave that up to you. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section about this, this new affidavit. And again, uh, JP, the life coach, I, I want someone out there. You got to tell me, do you want this man as your life coach? Should he be a coach of it? I mean, pastors, what, let alone life coach. I mean, come on now, come on. But you guys can let me know. And again, if you want to check out the full affidavit, you can go over to Fitz News and read that over there. Uh, don't forget again, uh, if you are able to contribute here to my ministry with a, don with a donation to help us out. And again, uh, for my wife, her recovery from her stroke. And again, all these medical expenses we have piling up and her being out of work for the next six weeks. And well, we're not even sure if she's going to have a job to come back to because they're not even sure that they can hold it. You guys can help us out by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video or 
You can become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link is in the description. What I wanna do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always wanna give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.